out of all 61, which ones did I love? Which ones do you need to read in 2022? In no particular order, none whatsoever, I will start. I think this one deserves to go first. It really is the book that just made me so excited to keep reading. Emily Henry is an amazing author. Everything she writes, it just does it for me. This is not most people's favorite of hers, but it is my absolute favorite. And I think it's because it's the first one I ever read. And that is The People We Meet on Vacation. This book follows two main characters, Poppy and Alex. And they meet in college. They don't have a lot in common, but they be quickly become very good friends. They're very close. Each summer, they go on a best friends vacation together. What's interesting, though, is current day Poppy and Alex are not actually friends. And so you're flashing back to the past and you're seeing the memories they have together and then also to the current day and trying to figure out what happened. What was this monumental event that drove them apart? Um, why aren't they friends today? And then can they rekindle their friendship or romance? I just really, really love this book. I loved the characters. I loved that they were on vacation. Vacation's amazing. Love that. I love a second chance romance. I love a flashback. So like really, what was not to love about this book? I couldn't put it down. I read this in like one day. Amazing. The next book I read is also a author that I discovered this year that I really enjoy. That would be uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this book is Daisy Jones and the Six. I've talked about this previously on this channel. It's kind of loosely based off Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac, but this is a based in the late 60s, so the vibes are immaculate. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. I really enjoyed a lot of things about this book. I love the cast of characters, and I also think there's a lot of quotable lines. That's something about Taylor Jenkins Reid, is all of her works have just beautiful quotes in them, and a lot of life lessons, really. So I just took a lot out of this book and I just flew through this. I read this in one day on a plane and I just loved it. The next book that I want to mention is more of a series, really. This is just my favorite book in the series so far. I haven't finished the series yet, but I feel like it's only going up upward from here. Like, it's amazing. And that is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. It follows an assassin, Selena, and she is competing to be the king's champion. It's just a great fantasy story. I think Sarah J. Mass just has done it again. She writes such interesting casts of characters. And that's really why Queen of Shadows was my favorite one I've read in this series so far. And I think it's just because the plot has just really started to get complex in this book. And at this point, this is the fourth book in the series, so you really know the main cast pretty well. And then Sarah J. Mass introduces a couple of other cast members and some side stories, and so it's really developing into a complex story. I think this is why fantasy continues to be on my top books of all time continually, is because there's just so much more plot and intrigue. A fantasy series, it might start out pretty confusing, the cast of characters might not make a ton of sense, but then three books later, it like all unfolds and you can appreciate it both as you're reading it and retrospectively as you think about all of the little subplots and characters that came together later in the books. So anyways, this was just the latest one that I read and it was just getting super interesting with the new cast and I can't wait to continue the series in 2023. And if you haven't read something by Sarah J Maas, um, you need to immediately. And I would probably start with A Court of Thorns and Roses. That series is just elite. Like, all-time favorite series. I really love it. I feel like this had really mixed reviews. I read this book in book club, and it was very 50-50. Like, some people loved it, some people hated it. I read it in probably two days because I thought it was so interesting. And that's The Maid by Nita Prose. This book is a murder mystery book and it follows a girl named Molly and she is neurodivergent. Her grandma has helped raise her by giving her a set of rules that she can follow to help her through life. Um, she definitely is someone who lives by the rules. She works as a maid at a hotel and she is great at her job. She's a fantastic maid. She's super clean but unfortunately she does not know when people are taking advantage of her in the story. The most interesting thing about this book to me is that the main character is so clueless as to what is going on around her, but then you can like see through her perspective what's happening, if that makes sense. 
Like it's, it was laughable to me. I was busting up when I was reading this book because you're like, oh no, Molly, don't do that. Like that person's the murderer and she just would be oblivious to it. To give you a taste of what this book was like, there is a part where she is going into this room and she's like, oh my gosh, I just don't get how every single night like they get the table so dirty in the hotel room. She's like, and powdered donuts again. And then you're like, oh, Molly, Molly, no. It's not powdered donuts, it's drugs. Anyways, hilarious to read. I really loved it. I think this is a super memorable read for me and I would love to reread it again. And the last book, I don't actually have a physical copy of it, but it's definitely worth mentioning. And that is Finding Me by Viola Davis. I didn't know anything about Viola Davis going into it. I honestly haven't watched a lot of movies or TV shows that she's in. Really went into this with no kind of background on her. I loved it. Her story is so intriguing. She really had some difficult circumstances growing up and the amount of things she had to overcome while also trying to establish herself as a creative is just impeccable. Like I was so impressed by her. I thought her story was something that everyone should know. I also loved just the wisdom that she had about her upbringing. I think she was just so mature Especially when she's talking about her relationship with her parents, I feel like it would have been so easy to be resentful of being in that situation and to just have that perspective and emotional maturity to be like, my parents tried their best and did what they could with what they had. I, I really loved her insight. I thought she was a very wise person to listen to and I actually listened to her narrate it on Audible and I would definitely recommend that you do that. She has such a powerful voice. If you haven't picked that up, I would definitely recommend it. It was a fantastic read. These were my top reads of the entire year. I had such fun reading these books. I can totally see myself revisiting them in the future. I've already revisited Daisy Jones and the Six like so many times. I tell literally every person ever about people we meet on vacation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, comment below. I would love to hear all of the books that you enjoyed in 2022. I'm always looking for new recommendations and 2023 is going to be our year. We're going to crush it. We're going to read so many books and only five stars, only five stars from here on out.